Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bottle gourds, bangla khudu, bangla lao. These are one of the most popular Asian vegetables that people are growing. And they're starting to become a lot more common to be grown in the UK by non-Asian people as well. They're an absolutely delicious vegetable and they're really part of my cultural heritage. But there's some common bottle gourd problems that a lot of people keep asking me the same old questions over and over again. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on some of those questions and we're going to try and resolve some of those common problems that you can get. So bottle gourds are climbers, right? They really love climbing over things and they like grow and they grow into massive plants so they need lots and lots of space. If you're going to cramp more than one plant in the same amount of space and expect it to do well, you're going to struggle because sometimes with these kind of plants that grow really big and need that vast amount of space, a few up number of plants is better if they're spaced out rather than planting lots in the same area and that way you avoid problems like diseases and mildew you avoid those diseases that are linked to lack of airflow we've got the whole frame that these two plants can climb over and ramble over and they'll do really well here now you might get some of the leaves especially around the base of the plant that start to yellow and start to crust over like this I mean that's sometimes caused by um, wind damage the yellowing is sometimes caused by uh, nutrients being taken out of that leaf and pulled into the rest of the plant but these are all leaves right so as long as the f new leaves are nice and fresh and nice and green and nice and lush these old leaves becoming a little bit worn a little bit worn to the weather a little bit worn to the time doesn't really matter just for the look of a plant you could just come in and snip those leaves off and it won't cause a major issue it's good and it's important to have a good airflow around the base of the plant that way you know where to water how much to water you want to be able to come into the gourd plant and check that it's got enough water so what i do to check if it's got enough water or not is i just come in and have a feel of the soil you can put your finger in that feels a little bit on the dry side i mean it's not too dry but it feels a little bit on the dry side so that's worth having a water now i'd give it a half a bucket of water now and then later on in a couple of hours i'd come back and give it another half a bucket and that way the first watering will get the water uh, you know it'll break that hydrophobicness of the soil and allow the rest of the water when you water it the second time to come and penetrate deep down into where the roots are and it'll the water will travel down further and the roots will stretch out further the roots of already of this plant are already well at the bottom of this you know at the bottom of this bucket so watering is an absolute must so you might see this sort of situation especially on a hot day you might see the bottle gold leaves droop like this do you know when they droop like this on a hot day this is not something that you really need to worry about this is transpiration so what's happening is the plant's giving off more water than it's absorbing and in a hot day when it's really sunny really bright yes this this is very common amongst all squash plants so you'll see it amongst pumpkins you'll see it amongst courgettes you'll see it amongst bottle gourds as well that they start to droop in order to preserve the water in order to preserve the you know to keep the integrity of that plant safe i'm not going to come in in the middle of the day and i'm not going to water right now it'll just put, force the plant to plump up in the heat of the sun and it'll give off more water so what i'm going to come in and later on this evening is i'm going to give it a nice good soak like i just described so mashallah you can see it's not the best of seasons but we're still having good bottle gourd production here but one two three that are ready for picking right now and we've already had two or three already so alhamdulillah they're coming on really nice the one that's hanging down over there this is called uh, a diana variety and this one up here this is shrabonti okay so they're really nice different types of bottle gourds all different shapes a common problem that people tell me is their bottle gourds are not getting a chance to set so as soon as the female flowers appear they open up and then the f flowers never set this is more than likely over here it's a pollination issue i explained a few years ago that the way bottle gourds and these kind of plants are pollinated is they're pollinated by moths at night time in india and bangladesh and you know in the subcontinent so the moths come out at night time they pollinate the plants and then they go away they've done the job over here it's a little bit different because we don't have those same moths that come and pollinate the plant 
Some of the native uh, pollinators won't pollinate the plant. Sometimes they will, but not always. I don't see a lot of bees around my bottle gourd plants. I see them around my squash plants, but not around my bottle gourds. So we're gonna have to step in and we're gonna have to take over. So let me find a couple of flowers and we'll try and hand pollinate a few and I'll show you how I hand pollinate them. So here's a male flower. Now a lot of people can't tell the difference between a male flower and a female flower. So this is the male flower. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the male flower, there's no sign of a gourd. It's just the, the, the flower coming up and that's all it is. Now on the base of a female flower, you'll see a little gourd. So a tiny little gourd and then the flower bud. You'll see a tiny little gourd and then the flower bud. And Here's one of those bottle gourds that's set, okay? Another one that's set. So when you have them rotting off really young and they don't get past the flowering stage, what I like to do is I like to take these male flowers and I like to pollinate them by hand myself. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but inside that flower you can see the pollen around um, just around the base there, around the stamen and that sort of area. Now what we'll do is let's see if we can find a female flower to pollinate it to. There's a female flower just on top so it's going to be a little bit awkward the way I pollinate this. But with this I don't like using a paintbrush, okay? So I don't like using a paintbrush to do this. What I like to do is, you can use a paintbrush if you, it's not the way I like to do it. I like to peel back the flower there and then all I'm left with is that. So you can see how much it's covered in pollen. I find this method more effective than the paintbrush because you're not touching any part of the flower, you know, of the female flower. I'll take the female flower just like that and I'll flick the male flower so all the pollen is hitting that female flower i'm not touching it because what can happen with with these is sometimes when you touch them you can cause damage around the female flower and cause it to rot yourself so this is the way i like to hand pollinate these and we'll come back in a few days and we'll see if that flower's set that's the probably the biggest question that I get asked, why are my bottle gourds not set in? Especially when a gourd plant is flowering for the first time in the season, what can happen is that you've got loads of female flowers, but you've got hardly any male flowers and they're flowering at different times. So there's no pollen mixing, okay? So what you actually need to do is you need to plant, for me, you'd need to plant several plants that way you've got male and female flowers opening at the same time. Then you've got the possibility of the pollen mixing. Um, just like I did with here, because I couldn't see any other male flowers open at the same time on that plant. So I've taken it from a different plant, brought it over, pollinated it. Yes, that will cause an issue for the next generation, you know, if you wanted to save seeds, because they're different varieties and you'll get a cross pollination. But for the plant that you want to eat, absolutely fine. I've got a slight problem here. So this, I've got a nice gourd that's set, but the problem is the vines become damaged. It's become really badly damaged. So let's have a look at some of the leaves on this vine as well. So if I just have a look at the leaves. telling me that there's no viability for this vine so this one needs to be actually picked right now you can still eat it at that stage absolutely fine but it's not going to grow much bigger because the plant sap and all the energy from the plant is not being directed towards that gourd because of the way it snapped because of the way the vines become damaged pick that take it enjoy it and wait for another plant or another gourd to set and do better this is the kind of thing that's caused that damage is because we've got vines that are hanging down they put on a good bit of growth but they're not 
you know they're not supported they're just hanging free in the middle of, in the middle of the air so i need to get these supported on top of this trellis and get them you know get them somewhere secure where they can grow freely so let's get this guy up and this is where you can cause some damage yourself if you're not careful they are quite sturdy plants they are quite robust but you could end up damaging the plant yourself so all i with these the tendrils are super strong if i find that there's not enough tendrils to give it the support then i'll add some you know i'll tie them in but other than that i just use the tendrils themselves to wrap around and let them do their thing look at this so this one's tied around this vine so strongly that it's going to actually suffocate that plant you know, it's going to suffocate that vine itself so they will grab onto anything they can so that needs taking off and you can see a bit of bruising on the stem of that where this one's a bit grabbed on tie that up like that and she'll be off to and she'll be off oops that's come down so that needs actually tying in that's a good example of one that I, that does need tying in so look at the way i've dropped it i've twisted the vine myself now i might have been the cause of this this vine being damaged so that's something to bear in mind you know that there's a mistake that i just made on camera that you can see and hopefully learn from there we go and that tendril leave it up there and it will wrap itself around we've got it some support so there's some common issues that people face when growing bottle gourds make sure you like and subscribe for regular updates i also make videos on patreon so if you want to support our channel that's a great way of doing it find us on other social media i'll leave it there for this one assalamualaikum warahmatullah